have been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and his disassembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give the place in our affections, prayers and services above every organization of the human world, to sustain his worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute to and regulate the pride that prompts with us towards the experience of the support of the faithful and the individual ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid the continuous spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to help. Amen. Right. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, mm -hmm. to study digitally mm -hmm. the Word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the services we promised others, in the road, in the purity of heart and good will towards all men to amplify and commend our holy faith. We pray to be able to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and serve each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposed to the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joy, and with the truth of sympathy for everyone that was worthy to be proud of us. To cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, a mean evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Together, we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible, to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this government and the principles of God's word. Amen.
But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Yeah. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Yeah. Honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor yeah. as thyself. Yeah. And the young man said unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, and go sell thou all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man had heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, and he had a great possession. That's it, that's good right there. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, just let it go. I promise we'll get out of 
going to take a minute to get out of here, but I'm going to give you a few things. Yeah. First thing I notice is the synoptic gospels. Watch this. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic. Yeah. Simply saying synonymous is the word that comes from, meaning that they synonymous, meaning that they tell the same story, but they omit details. The details are just a little different. Uh -huh. The only detail in these texts that are the same is that the fellow doesn't have a name. You remember what I said about that? That means it could be you. Yeah. But the three different translations says one called him a ruler, one called him rich, and one just said a, a young man. Yeah. He was young, rich, and a ruler, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole synoptic thing in here means that Jesus don't care about you being young, rich, and a ruler. Can I, can I, can I help somebody? It's all right that you got it balling and you you balling out of control. You don't know. But watch this. I said we got to own everything. Yeah. And sometimes you have to remind rich people that everything that you own is that you borrow it from God. Because I've never seen anybody put a hurt in the U-Haul. I've never seen a funeral where they drag a body down here. Everything they own is tied to it and going to the graveyard. I'm going to tell you that when you die, somebody else will be driving your car. When you die, somebody else will be wearing your clothes. Just get so disconcerted so you can get your home. Jesus 
is when Jesus told the people, the Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Every preacher, every pastor, every yeah. person that's in ministry is a servant leader. Won't yeah. tell you why? Because we gotta serve first yeah. before we can lead. That's right. We need you our servant. Y'all wouldn't, y'all wouldn't follow me if I didn't go out and lead you my servant. We go out here, we lay it out for the community. We give, we feed them um, once a month. We go out and we participate. Watch this. I'm going to tell you how I know we serve this. Because the New Life of Christ Church started this feeding the community yeah. all over. Yeah. Y'all hear me in Facebook? Then we did that. Yeah. Well, not everybody else follows suit. Yeah. Because we are servant leaders. You have to serve. And then everybody will get on course with that. But then let me say this. It's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven too. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. See, people think that once you get in the kingdom of God, you're in the kingdom of heaven. No. If you get in the kingdom of God, that's down here. Yeah. Uh-huh. A lot of people are not involved in the kingdom of God here because we're too busy trying to be in church but don't want to be involved with the church. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Right. And I'm going to sit my car out there. Yeah. Right. Right. But in order to get to the kingdom of heaven, you've got to make it down here in the yeah. kingdom of God. Yeah. Y'all, are y'all listening to yeah. me? That's, that's how you make it up there. Yeah. Jesus says to him, all you got to do is keep the commandments. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, love your mother and father, all that good stuff. Yeah. Watch what he says to him. He says, I've done that all my life. Uh-huh. Pause. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is there anybody in here that can say that they've kept the commandments all their life? Uh-huh. If you raise your hand, I'm going to thump you in your phone. <laughs> you see, I have my hand ready to <laughs> Because I don't know about y'all, but I can't say none of that stuff. If you read, if you're real with yourself, we do not feel any of these commandments. That's right. That's right. right. I should not see this. We don't make strong people up something and walk out there. Y'all should not kill. You don't kill a rat. You don't kill a rat. Some of y'all don't kill cats and dogs. Some of y'all don't kill somebody. If you can't kill, you kill them now. I'm just saying. But here's the shock, though. Even though I didn't keep the commandments, yeah. he still kept me. Yeah. Thank you, God. He didn't have to stop for that. Then Jesus says, I'm going to read 23. 
It said Jesus turned his disciples and says, I tell you the truth. Verily, verily, that's what that means. So I'll tell you the truth. That a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then he goes on to 24 says, it's easier for a camel yeah. to pass through the eye of the needle. Yeah. It's for a rich man. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I thought about that, I was like, that is incredulous. That's asinine. Yeah. How is it that you take an animal the size of a camel and you take something as small as a needle yeah. and you make a camel get through that little small hole? Yeah. Anybody in here ever tried to sew before? Mm-hmm. Y'all see my fingers? Okay. I've pricked myself so many times. You would think I'm taking my blood sugar trying to need it, trying to thread a needle. Can you get through that? Yeah. That's the thread that fits. Y'all yeah. said a camel gonna pass through the eye of a needle for a rich man to make it to heaven. Uh-huh. What does that mean? This, I, I think that we should not strive as hard to be so rich. Yeah. Because let me tell you, money's not everything. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. It's nice to have it. Yeah. But money ain't everything. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you why? Because rich people have money but don't have love. They're not rich. Because they lack. Yeah. That's the part that I see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me go back. He said, I do. God said, if you're going to do this, you got to bear off the man. He said, I've done this all my life. What do I lack? Yeah. yeah. Jesus said, you lack something. Let me pause right quick. Because it's all right to think that you all that and bag chips. Yeah. But everybody lacks something. Yeah. 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 I remember the first time I got reprimanded when I was in the Navy. And if you know me, you know that part of my upbringing from some of the surrounding family members was that I don't back down for nothing on the land. And the incident I got into, I was working for this lady chief, and she had a smart mouth. And I'm just like, listen, I'm, I'm new to this. Jesus be with me because I can't take these people who are in high places that talk to me any kind of way. But you can't say nothing back to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Uh-huh. 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 That's right. So I was like, you know what? Lord, I know that this is not for me, but I'm going to say what I got to say. And it is what it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So she came to me one day. I was going in inspection. You know, the inspector they come and they check the uniform. Yeah. And I missed a little spot on my head. And she tells me, you failed your inspection because you missed that spot. Yeah. I said, well, you should have failed yours because your wig is crooked. Y'all see my face? Do y'all see my face? With all that, I'm not lying. That's exactly how I looked at her. I, would, I had to go see the command master chief, who was the most senior and distant person on the ship. And he cursed me out pretty bad. I don't want any money in out there because in, in my mind, her wig is still cursed. Yeah. Yeah. You can say whatever you want to me. I'll be whatever you want me to be, but still, because I failed the inspection, her wig is cursed. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know, Mr. CNC, you didn't hear fussing at me for one of your sheets, and your and your sheet has got a pretty good and that's out of the yeah. Y'all feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but all I'm saying, you know, I can get I can get crazy with it because when I was in Spain, the don't ask, don't tell policy came out. And I'm sad because all these black men came out as homosexual. Yeah. Now, if you know me, I've been growing my beard since 2016. I was still in the Navy. I actually shook the president's hand with a stubble beard on my face. Yes, I did. Yeah. It's on the internet if you don't believe me. Now, on the picture, on the internet, a lady commented and said, I can't believe that you didn't have the audacity to shave. When the president came to town, I pulled out my wave. I said, your husband, who's the captain, gave me this. Yes, you know, but he married you and you have green teeth. I'm 
my daughter is sick. And Jesus said, if you just speak a word, she'll be healed. Jesus is already done. And the God the text said, by the time he had gotten back to her, where she was sick with was gone. So see yourself here. And now God, 